such a privilege to be with you today. It, uh, it's the time we get to come and worship together. I know uh, for most of us, mercifully, the election season has come to an end, and now it's time to pay attention to the season that we're in. For some of you, you know, it's already been here. All season is here. Now we can turn our attention to what matters. It's been great, man. I know last night, uh, Midalani, big over Coppola. It was a big game. So that was fun. You get to see that. I love football, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to when my son is old enough to finally understand football, and then we can go to some games together. I can have somebody to with. And uh, I, I'm a little sad because I'm not going to get to take him to Aloha Stadium. So that's where my dad took me, and we grew up going there. We had a lot of great memories. And I'll just have to tell him stories about it, which makes me feel kind of old, because my grandfather used to tell me stories about going to the Honolulu Stadium. Okay, yeah. It's stadium Park now, right? And he tell me stories about taking my uncle there and uh, going to watch UH games. And there was a story about a time during a um, San Jose State game. And uh, it was raining so hard. And one of the players got the ball, and they went to one of the field so well. They tackled him, and he was under the pocket, and he almost drowned on a football field. Oh that, maybe that's why they closed it. But it was just, it was just like this crazy story about a, a time gone by. And so I'm going to have those stories for my son and my daughter. Um, I'll tell them about the time I took their mother on a date there before we were married, and I got to make sure she was a football fan so we could actually get married. It was a big list and I'll tell them about the time I was at the noisiest game I'd ever been at 2001 Fresno State Friday afternoon I was in the Malka sideline red section and we had just secured the three crazy and I see the band playing I couldn't hear them it was that loud everyone was just going nuts like the best experience ever to win that game and you know you know times in the state if everybody got jumping together, the whole stadium would rock. And it's okay, because the stadium authority says, no, it's, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to move. It's supposed to rust a little bit, too. And it's supposed to open for baseball season. You heard all of those stories. But it was so awesome. Those experiences are so great. I remember one time we were in there. They stopped the game because there was lightning. And I'm sitting out and I'm looking over and there's lightning coming down. The players leave the field. But for some reason, they left all of us in a metal structure with lightning. <laughs> I guess this is a survival of the fittest. Those who stayed, you get what you get. Man. A lot of times I'd sit in the orange section and the rain would come in and just driving rain and we'd be so and we'd stay because we're man. We're gonna you guys. And it was really awesome. There was just like really solidarity there, man. A lot of people go up to the blue but we just stayed there. Like, and those big moments, the big victories, the rain, even sometimes in the heat, you go out there like, man, you just feel a part of the team. It's just... There are only two types of people in the world. Those who are rainbow warriors and those... You don't care if the person next to you is old, whether they're vegan or a normal person. You don't care if they're tall or short. If, if they grew here or choose here, like no matter what it is the we're going to unite around. We're going to unite around this team and this place. And for a moment, there's just this total devotion to this one thing. And you put aside your personal identity, your preferences and everything, and you stand with this person next to you. And I think that's so healthy to kind of put aside what onto and who I am. Stand next to people. I mean, I've hugged so many people in stadiums that I don't even know. You just get excited and everybody goes, high five. And this is before COVID, so you could do stuff like that. And I've been grabbed in ways that just like, no, it's okay right now. And in that moment, it's this awesome unity. And we get to just enjoy that. And it, wouldn't it be better and great if we could do that all the time? Something. Because sometimes it feels like, and I know a lot of people feel like, we are more divided than we've ever been. Like this time, we are the most divided. And it feels that way. Feelings aren't always true. Uh, because for a time, I don't have to remember this, but there's South calls it 
between the states, probably correctly, that they weren't throwing insulting memes at each other. They were throwing bullets. There was some real animosity there. Uh, look back to the 1960s and the 1970s. That was at least as divisive as we have now, if not more. Unrest, civil unrest. That was something that happened. We as humans, it seems that division is the default position for us. Rather myopically, that our time is the most divided time of all time. Struggle time. But if we look back into all of our history, even the short history of 150 years or 200 years, there have been many times each generation has its challenges. Each generation has something to overcome and some division that will come and intercept us and tear us apart. And so what the natural thing to do is we will take our, our lives and we'll encircle ourselves with people who act like we do or who think like we do and we'll take out any other opinions, any other options, any other perspectives into our lives. And so we get this little bubble and it just divides us further and further. We don't let anybody into that inner circle. But what if the difference that divide us are really there for our benefit? What if the differences that we allow to divide us are really there for our benefit? Unified around something so profound that it turned rivals into allies. What would that look like? We're in the uh, sixth week of a series called Known. We title it Known. And we've been looking for deeper connections in the world. For how to have unity in the midst of the diversity through relationship. Unity where we agree, that's easy. Very easy. <laughs> unity where we disagree is much more challenging. And how many of you know when something is more challenging, the word is greater. So we're going to dive into that. Before you do, please allow me to pray for us. Father, we just, again, invite you into this place. We invite that peace of yourself which you wish to reveal. Show us the unity and the peace that is your nature. So we invite you here to just reveal your heart and to help us to change our hearts towards you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus knew that division was going to be a struggle. He, uh, this, obviously, he created the world. He knew what was going to happen. And so he's prayed for us, and he knew that even the people he was praying for in the first century, uh, we were going to have this trouble. So in John 16, Jesus is telling his disciples, I'm going to go away. There's going to be trouble. Don't fear. And while we're in the air, there's a prayer that we get to answer if we choose to. In John 17, 22, he says, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as the Father and I you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them. They may be one, even as we are one. Jesus prays that we will have unity, not just because it's a good idea just for pragmatic purposes. God is unified, therefore we should be unified. Even as God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all individually unique, they are also completely unified. And lost in that unification. And that's a lot of times the problem with unifying, or we feel it is, because we feel like, like we unify this person, I'm going to lose a, a, a piece of myself. And that's not true. You will still be complete. So God exhorts us to behave in certain specific ways. Sometimes we call them laws. That's not his purpose. He just wants us to be more like him. He wants us to be full of joy and full of life like he is. God's nature is unified. Therefore, we should be unified. And we will be most satisfied when we are unified as he is. Choosing unity... Unity is choosing to elevate and embrace one thing above others. This is one definition of unity. This is choosing, unity is choosing to elevate and embrace one thing above others. It's not disregarding differences. 
differences of opinion, differences of passion, differences of personality. It's making a distinction on what is truly important. When we as a family of God choose to love God and love each other, our differences are no longer impediments. Banner or a flag that we rally around. In the fog of battle, soldiers know that if their flag is there, they can run to it. And there is safety. They also know the, flag, the fight is still on. If the flag is still up there, the fight is still on. And they can rally around the flag. And it's there that they can find help. When we rally around love, that's the truth. And it's no longer you versus me. They're, those are not the opposing sides anymore. The sides are those who are pursuing love and those who need to be pursued by love. Those who are pursuing love and those who need to be pursued by love. And no matter who invades who, the result is still the same. Love is expressed and unity is established. And I've been on both sides of that. I think there are times I've done pretty well pursuing love. I've been the guy who's gone out and actually loved people. And there are a lot of times I'm on the receiving end. I'm the guy who needs to be loved. And there are people who, who have overlooked my faults and foibles and love. And in that moment, there is unity. Because we have both, we have experienced love and we have expressed love. Ephesians ex exhorts us this way, Paul does, in Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. With that mindset, our differences are not obstacles. We might even to appreciate our difference can become an asset. Pastor Chiomi shared this morning about some people, uh, they are not a problem to solve. They are a person to love. You know people like this. Like if they could just, if could just fix them, if they would just change, if they would just do something different, like that, they're not the problem to solve. They're just someone who needs to be loved. They're on the other side. We should be on the side that is is, is pursuing love. And they are on the side of people who need to be pursued by love. The Apostle Paul encouraged unity in this way in Ephesians 4, 2, and 3. Completely humble, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Remain unified through the bond of peace. This verse isn't a real clean translation from Greek to English. It's pretty close. But there were some liberties taken to kind of make it a little more readable and to make it smoother for us to understand. Here's a translation word for word from the Greek. And so this is Bible Hub. Always read and it's very much. So on this slide you can see all the words in red are English translated from the Greek. And it's pretty much one Greek word for one or two English words. Then we get to the bottom and there's a Greek word that doesn't have an English word under it. It's just a dash. And that's a bit odd, but there's a reason for it. That Greek word is basically the word the, T-H-E, the. And so they leave it out. So a straight translation of this should read something like, keep the unity in the bond, the peace. And they leave out the, and they add of to the bond, instead of the bond, the peace. And that's fine, it's not really a big deal. I don't have a major problem with it, but it misses a little bit of the nuance that we want when, when we translate it in, uh, when we read it in Greek, but this is as close as we can. Peace isn't bonding to something. It isn't the bond of peace, it's peace. It is bond. Peace isn't bonding something, Peace itself, that bond. Another way you could say it, the bond that peace is. The bond that peace is. Again, it's not a huge difference, but I think it gives us insight into what God has for us and why we should choose the bond, the peace. Because there are three ways, at least three ways we can bond things together. The first way we can bond something is we can stick it together. So my wife, a while back, asked me, she said, do you have any duct tape? And I looked at her like, do you even know me? <laughs> of course I have duct tape. 
I have 50 rolls of specialized duct tape. I stand it. And so the bond things, we just stick it together. And we're stuck, stuck together. And so these are things stuck together by external for, uh, forces. Stuff like um, coworkers. We're kind of stuck with our coworkers. Or we're stuck with people in the DMV, right? We're just, we're just stuck together. And we're just trying to get by. Thing, but we try and make the, the best of it, right? And you can get out of it without a whole lot of mess, but you just, you just kind of stick around. You try to be polite. No chance. Even if you're in the deep, look at your phone. Be polite. Let's not do that. So we're bonded together, but not forever, right? We, we can get out with not, not a huge consequences. But it's not the bond of peace. It's kind of the bond of misery. Just when you're stuck, stuck, we're all stuck here. And so it's, it's, it's just something you try to be positive. It's an external bond. We bond from the outside. There's another bond, and it's the bond of welding. So I got my weld this up for me. And welding is when you take two pieces of metal, and you get a either hot rod or a wire, and you just heat it up so much, and it burns both ends and adds a little bit of metal it cannot come apart and just welded together and through a lot of circumstances and there's some relations relationships that this happens so like with my brother you know my brothers and I we've been through some stuff and you get into hard things and you get hardened and you get welded together and so yeah we get into it with each other a lot of times but try to break us apart that's when we get the toughest and so we are really welded together this extreme example is, is people who have gone to war, right? You have bullets flying at you, you are welded together with those people for the rest of your life. And you are welded. That can be really good. It can also be really unhealthy. Some people have experience with others and in an unhealthy way. And because of those hurts, they get welded with people that they shouldn't be. And that needs to be broken. But it's more from circumstance that they are welded together. And it's a strong bond. And that also is not what we're talking about with the bond, the peace. He was talking about the interlocking bond. So one of the most beautiful ways to bond things together is the Japanese. It's an ancient form of Japanese joinery. And it doesn't use nails or glue. Each piece is held together chiseled exactly like it needs to be to fit together. And separate the pieces, it kind of looks unnatural. Like, what does this piece have to do? If you just saw it by itself, you say, that's an odd piece. That's good for nothing. It might actually not fit very well into anything. It might even be a hindrance. It might be something like, oh, maybe we should just cut it clean and make it smooth so it's not going to grab anything. But each notch has a design, and they are made to fit into one piece. So I don't have a traditional sashimono style, but I do have a 21st century plastic. This is a 3D printer. And you see, each piece is, is on its own, kind of ridiculous. Like, what is this for? And they fit together into a different shape. And they bond together in a way. And you see how they fit on their own. And so when we join together in the essential parts in the right way, we become whole as God designed us. And we become in each other by actually getting to interact and, begin, and beginning to know and to be known. We are bonded together. And we're not stuck together. This isn't an external force. We're not welded together necessarily. We might be, but probably not. That is the choice we make. We choose to join together. And it means those people are different than us. In fact, that's almost the definition of it, that these people that we are choosing to bond together are different than us, or we wouldn't fit. That's not a feature. It's, it's not a bug. It's the feature. Purpose. Different people with different ideas, different perspectives, different idiosyncrasies. Those are the people we choose to bond together. If you had 
two of the same sides of Velcro doesn't work. Or think of a puzzle piece. You think of a puzzle, if, if all the pieces of the puzzle were the same, if they were all flat, fit, by definition it needs to interlock for there to be a bond, for, there to, for things to be whole. Your puzzle piece is not whole until it is interlocked together. I want to give you some examples of conflict that might arise, and maybe we can look at these translation of the Bible they read. We're not particularly like this here at Hope Chapel Milani, but it's a thing. And uh, I have pastors who went to different churches. In one church, they'll read the New King James Version, speak, and they'll read the NIV. And if they were to use the wrong translation in the wrong church, they probably wouldn't be allowed to speak. It's a big deal. And I'll admit, when I was younger, I was a little bit more than a lot legalistic. And I was a New King James Version. I was NKJV for life, man. I didn't have any use for a translation that was not the New King James Version. And uh, I didn't go Old King James, because that's, that's crazy. That's a little bit. You, you start reading Old King James, and you start talking funny. You're like, you just ask a simple question, and it comes out different. It's like, good morrow, good sir. Mightest thou know where I might find some sustenance? Did he tell me where the nearest McDonald's is? And you don't want to go there because I don't think my wife would let me in the door if I started talking to her like that. It's going to happen. But in God's grace, I started to learn that all, all translations aren't perfect. And to my utter shock, I'm not perfect. So we have... And uh, when you translate from the original language of the Bible, Hebrew and Greek and English, some things just really get lost in translation. And that's why there's so many translations. And it would be nice if we could just do a nice, simple word-for-word -word translation. That would be easy. Um, but as we saw earlier in that example, it, it's just not that simple. They take a whole sentence, some, sometimes do that, they get as close as they can, but sometimes there's like a thought-for-thought -thought translation. So they'll take a whole sentence or a whole verse, sometimes even more, and they'll break down the thought, and then they'll write that down. It's like, this is, this is what they were trying to say, not word-for-word, -word, but thought-for-thought. -thought. And either way is perfect. I'm going to give you an example of this. Down some sentences uh, by word for word and also thought for thought. So our first example is the phrase "ho oh, kanak attack." <laughs> okay, so word for word we got "ho" oh, verbal expression, "ho," oh. and we got "kanak," kind of like a, a Hawaiian. You can say "kanaka." So "ho oh, attack," "ho oh, Hawaiian attack." Doesn't quite work. Translation, word for word, might say, move the exclamation to the end, and we say, Hawaiian attacked. And that's kind of closer, because maybe they're attacked by food or something. Either of those works. So what we do is we take a thought for thought translation, and, Ho Kanak attack me, eat too much. Now God. Okay? So it's not perfect, but it works, right? So we got another example. We can work through this one. The next one is Hanabara Kid Kind Days. All right? We know the expression. Yeah. So we can word for word. It's like Hanabara, snot, kid, child. Kind is like maybe time. So we have a snot. So it doesn't quite work. Um, but a thought for thought translation would be something like when I was a child who wasn't even old enough to blow my own nose. That would be one translation. Or we could say, when I was a small child. Okay? That gets the thought for thought going. And neither of them are perfect because even though we get the thought for thought, the word for word here, because in the word for word, it gives us a clearer picture or a grander picture of what he's saying. He's saying, you can think of Hanabara in kind days. It gives you the picture of a child who's running free in the innocence of his youth. And that's a wonderful thing you get in the word for word, but you don't quite get the thought. And the other one is completely a mess. The Kanak attack just doesn't work at all. And so you find this balance, and we try and find a balance there where we can understand the word better, and we can get it there, and we can look at the, the overall and the nuance and see that it's there for our benefit. So I'm going to show you a graphic of, of Bible translations. There's, there's multiple graphs like this. But there's all these Bible translations and they 
all somewhere on the scale between these two methods. On, on the left side is word for word, and you've got some very specific ones. You have the Amplified Bible, and you have the ESV, and all those on the left side. And on the right side, those are kind of thought translations. And they go all the way to the far right is all the paraphrases, things like the message. And we have all of these different things, and everybody's trying to come up with something that's perfect, and it's not. And so we have all these versions so that we can gasp, grasp what, what God is trying to say for us. So the left is really hard to read, and we go all the way to the right. It's easy to read, but it's such a paradigm doctrine on it. It was like, we're getting the, the, the gist of it, but we just don't want to build our, our life on our salvation on these, these things because it's just got a little too much interpretation that may not be there in the original. So some of you might like reading the NLT. That's kind of more on the thought for thought. And for those of you who read on the NLT, I just want to tell you to get out of my... No. No. <laughs> If you read the NLT, you know, most people who read the NLT, they just want a clear manner that they can apply. And you know what? I love that about you. I love that you want to read the Bible and you just want it to make sense to you so you can apply it. That is a wonderful way to read the Bible. Some of you have amplified version. All, all the way on the left side. And I want to tell you guys, you get out and know. You know? I love that about you. I love that you want to get into the nuance of scripture. You want to see the words find that you have to read it multiple times, that the Amplified Bible is 20% longer than the other Bibles. You want that. That is a wonderful way to read the Bible. Some of you, you pick up any version that's lying around. <laughs> you don't know NIV, ESV, LMNOP. It don't matter. <laughs> I love you guys too, because you're going to read the Bible. You just want God to show up. You don't know what version it comes in. You expect God is going to meet you in that version. That is the best reason to read the Bible. We can be divided into things like this, or we can appreciate people who love the nuance, people who love the practical, people who just want God to show up. And I don't want to worship with a group of people that only read the same translation I do. I mean, honestly, when Pastor Jared puts up a verse, I will often read it in another yeah. translation, just because I want to see the nuance. Some of you are normal and not like me. But I just love to see, hey, what is, what is different about this thing? And you don't have to be that way. But different way to get a fuller picture of who God is. That way we can be bonded. Bonded in peace. We can choose to be bonded with people who read different translations than us. It's in those places where we come together and we are peace. We have peace. Pardon the pun. We are pieced together. So we can focus on all our differences, but if we unify around, there is peace, safety, and strength. One of those people who use the KJV, the James Version, you would know that the word for love, charity, charity. And so 1 Corinthians, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not. I have become as sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. That's a great word to describe. Charity is giving something that is yours that you have earned to someone who doesn't necessarily deserve it. But, and they might be ungrateful for it. It is giving something that is yours that you have that to someone who doesn't necessarily deserve it. Charity. God gives us charity. God has always given us charity. And we are expected to give that to each other. When we differ from someone, can we start with charity? Can we start giving them something they don't deserve? Why do we read, the, you know, I may think of, why do they read a terrible translation of the Bible? Maybe they need to interact with the Bible in a different way. That's true. Maybe you need to interact with the Bible in a different way. Maybe you should try a different version. You know, but honestly, like if you just like that, would be, if you're going to do a deep study, read multiple translations. Read the read from the original if you can. That's great. But other than that, can you just interact in your way and your passion and your desire? And that would be a wonderful thing for the whole body of Christ. In Ephesians four thirty one to thirty two, it says, "Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and slander be put away from you." 
all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one. It's easy to get divided in our church services. Some churches like the lights to come down low during worship. And about midway through the first song, the fog starts to roll. Away. And then the strobe lights go. And that's great, man. It's just like the fog, the presence of God in the electric guitars. That would be awesome. Some churches, they like to sing hymns that are no less than 200 years old. Just voices. And they sing the songs like, Oh, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Thy goodness like a fetter. Bind my weary soul to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Take my heart, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. That's pretty good. old doesn't mean it's added. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sing that song and get a little fog in there, man, that would... You know, some people want to connect with God in an emotional and physical way. Other people want to be grounded in truth. So we give charity to each other. Charity and the peace. Somebody, why do you have that conversation? You'll begin to see their perspective, why they do what they do, and you'll begin. And you might even encourage them to worship their way because they have an amazing for the reason they went for the reason they worship. And they, plus you, plus us, have a fuller picture what he has made us to be. I was uh, at a conference. Back it was, there was loud music and jumping and tears and et cetera, et cetera. Worship flags all over the place. And I had a question. My question was, why you got to do that up front? <laughs> there seems to be some room in the back. Him. Like, you know what? No big deal. I felt God had something for me. He did. Just, uh, I'm doing my thing. I'm not doing banners. I'm not staying right, right where I'm at. And um, somewhere near this, I don't know which 50th song we sang. But <laughs> I said, Pastor Chiomi's with us. And Pastor Chiomi gets up and she goes on going for it. What I thought. What I thought. I had not one problem with that. Go. You know why? I feel like she's one of us. I know her. Like I know her heart. I know a little bit of her story. This is how she expresses worship. This is how she glorifies God. This is her passion. And so I am encouraged. This is how she loves to express herself and how she feels compelled to do it. I think um, I think if she's in a grocery store and she hears a song that's just like almost Christian. Yeah. That's her. She's not amazing. I would love to see. And division. If we get to know each other, there's peace because I know. So we've talked and we've talked. And I think if I sat down with all of those other people waving flags and I had a relationship with them, I would encourage them to do it too. And I'm like, that's awesome. You're great. Do that wonderful thing for them is operating in their passion and their calling. That's the calling is good for you when you are passionate and your calling. It's good for, for me. And we are interlocked in It's an amazing thing. And we give charity where we don't understand. But if we have that conversation, it's an amazing thing. <clears throat> that conference, 
would be described as a scrum up front. And it looked like a... a all over the place. And there was this one teenager, and he was standing up there. And you know, from the outside, it could kind of look like he's just a moody teenager, typical. And, you know, his name was Elijah. And he had these super parents. You could tell they were volunteering. And they were, like, praying for him. They really wanted him to have this. Want this for your kid. And he's just standing there and nothing. And people are praying for him and nothing. People are falling to the left and falling to the right. He's standing there. And I go up to pray. And so we're just this kid. I've been this kid. I'm standing there. And you get to see him. And I'm like, and I hopefully I was telling him, like, for this. God may not pick you up and throw you on the floor like you want. Because we all want that. Hold on in this moment. This is the place that God is building something inside of you. These people are getting an emotional experience, and that's great. But God is something deeper. If you can walk through this time, God has something for you. And so from the outside, you can see oh, he is this. And you can that peace. You instead of a teenager, you're like, go, kid. Because it's important for us. It's important for all of us that people find a place and they dig deep into this. And they don't have to feel it. They'll come out. They'll have an experience. But for this moment, when that experience comes, that experience is going to do nothing in that moment. And if we can have these relationships and talk to people who are waving the flags and who are standing there, we can ask questions about them or judge them. Instead, we can have the bond and peace with them. And it would be a wonderful thing for us. From a distance that it's easiest to judge. Here's one. We don't really have a problem with this in our church, but I just think it's a good example. You know, in some places, some people, they get dressed up for church, right? Put on the best aloha shirt. The best aloha shirt. You know, and some people do that, and that's okay. And some people, they come and shorts, and, and that's okay. And some people are like, well, why do you do that? You know, why you got to dress up? And some people are like, why you got to dress down? This isn't the beach. But if we can have people are thinking, man, I really want to make this day special. I really want to. And the people who are dressed a little more casually are like, you know what? Is this how it is? And we're a family. And so I, I love that about you. And hey, I appreciate that you feel like family. And we can embrace each other. And there is the bond, the peace. comes in shoes and somebody can come dressed up that normally comes in slippers. And that's peace. And you see the differences are actually to your benefit. And peace. This is not about tolerance. We do not tolerate we do not tolerate abuse. Like we talked about when, when you're welding together, right? There is be welded in an inappropriate way. That's we're not tolerating obedience to learn how God uniquely and even if we don't read the right version of the Bible, we're learning to understand why God made them, how he did, how he we can join to each other to get a picture to the world. Romans 14 he says, Let us do peace. And to mutual edification. Effort to make peace. To recognize with someone else. It takes an effort to have a conversation before we judge. And to come and unify with them. It's worth it. The bond, the peace, is embracing that God has made with unique passions, preferences, for your That person who is irritating you has a passion, a preference, and a perspective. And your passion and perspective and preference is for them. And when we come together, there's wholeness, there's peace. We have the bond. The we don't need them to change. We need to... If they trade, and a lot of people do, you need an upgrade in your hand. 
Like, yeah, we'll let God take care of that. You love them. And choose the bond, the bond of peace. God wants us to have unity primarily through relationship. We have community, and that's how we do it. We tell our story, and we listen as people tell their story to us. Charity, we receive charity. Because sometimes it's hard to But receiving charity is a lot harder. Disagree, even if we're right and they're wrong, and they are always wrong. You know it. You know you're right. So we acknowledge that people have different personalities, passions, and perspectives. But it brings wholeness as we unify. The worship team back up, and we're going to partake in communion together. The Bible says, after dinner, after dinner, Jesus broke the bread. A lot of things get said. There's probably a lot of... Uh, Jesus invites that after we know each other. So these guys know each other. They know the good, the bad, and the ugly of each of them. And he says, after this, I'm going to invite you. Pastor Terrence talked about it earlier. Is that they want to unify around this earthly kingdom. They want to unify around uh, fighting for their rights. Jesus, they take by encourage you, there's some questions in your bullet to dive into these. They're not made to be answered on your own. These are made to be in community. So I encourage you just to talk about them, answer them. Be as transparent as you can comfortably be. Open people can hear your So we can peace. By anyone, them, people. We stop. We offer charity. We choose the bond, the peace. We choose to get to know them. Maybe. Before we have 15 talks about this, we says, hey, if you have a problem, go to them first. Go to them first. So when you see anybody say, oh, those only people who are pursuing love and those who need to be pursued. Choose your side. Father, we just want to today choose the bond. We want to choose charity with you. We want to choose charity. We want to choose to be known and to know other people welcome you to do that work in our heart where we need to see others not as them but as ours people say hey they're on our side we just welcome you to do that work in our hearts in Jesus name thank you well let's amen anybody